Assalamu alaikum. Today we'll be reciting from Surah Isra, Surah number 17, ayat number 78. <laughs> أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَى غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكِ
وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا لِلنَّاسِ فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ صَبَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ إِنَّا كَفُورًا وَقَالُوا لَنْ مَنَا لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَقَالُوا لَمْ نُؤْمِنَ لَكَ حَتَّى تَفْجُرَ لَنَا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ يَمْبُعَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى آل بيتك المعصومين المظلومين لعن الله الظالمين لكم سادتي من الأولين والآخرين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا با عبد الله الحسين يا صريع الدمعة الساكبة وصاحب المصيبة الراتبة يا غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء سيدي ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما كيف تهنيني الحياة وقلبي بعد قتل الطفوف دام الجراح بأبي من شرى لقاء حسين بفراق النفوس والأرواح وقفوا يدرؤون سمر العوالي عنه والنبلاء وقفة الأشباح فوقوه بيض الضباب النحور بالنحور البيض والنبل بالوجوه الصباح فئة إن تعاور النقع ليلا أطلعوا في سماء شهب الرماح وإذا غنت السيوف وطافت يا يا تأكس الموت وانتشى كل صايا يا حي أدركوا بالحسين أكبر عيد فغدوا في من الطفوف أضاحي These companions of Abi Abdullah Al-Husayn Through Abi Abdullah Al-Husayn Through being martyred between the hands of Abi Abdullah Al-Husayn They considered that it is عيد for them لست أنسى من بعدهم طود عزين 
وعادي مثل سيل البطاح وهو يحمي دين النبي بعض بسناه لظلمة الشرك ما حي شفتك والسيوف عليك والزان وشفتك عثر مطروع عريان وشفت شتالكم بالنصر فرحان لبس درعك وجالي نيت بختار وناحت ضعون اهلي مشت عني وناحت وساس النذيل تم ثابت وناحت والله الخنسة ما بكت مثلي وناحت ولا مثل انسبت لابن الدعية يا يا ولا مثل انسبت لابن الدعية لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وسيعلم الذين ظلموا اي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبه للمتقين صلوا على محمد وال محمد The fourth night of Muharram in Al-Haram it's nominated after Habib ibn Mudahir we usually commemorate his martyrdom on the fourth night of Muharram al-Haram and generally the companions. Habib ibn Mudahir, that old man who chose to spend the last days of his life serving Abi Abdullah al-Hussein during this age, usually people, they choose their final days to enjoy eating the fruit of their life efforts. Everything that they made in their life, now it's the time to sit down, enjoy the money that I uh, made in my life, enjoy my kids, them serving me, seeing their children. Habib ibn Mudahir found the real happiness in leaving his family, leaving his country, leaving his home and going to be martyred between the hands of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Al Imam al Hussein, before Habib ibn Mudahar arrived to Karbala, he was waiting for him. He was looking to the far point that he can reach with his eyes, waiting for Habib ibn Mudahar to come. Imagine reaching that status. We are waiting for Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman. Imagine we reach a status where the Imam is waiting to see us. The Imam is looking out, looking forward to meet us. The same way Al Imam Al Hussein السلام, wanted to meet Habib al Mudahir, waited for him. And when he delivered the news to Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Zainab السلام, got happy. How did he achieve that status? How did he reach that level that Al Imam السلام, is waiting for him? Now we will understand that Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman, he is the one who is waiting for us because if we are prepared, then the environment, the conditions are ready for him to reappear. But to wait us in the meaning that he wants to see us, he misses us, like Al Imam Hussein, how he treated. Habib ibn Mudahir, how can we achieve that status? The main thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in, about in the Quran is piety. Today, we will talk about the major battle that a human, that a worshipper faces in his life in two chapters. First, about the opposite to the piety. What's opposite to the piety? Which is the sins. The reality of sins. What are the effects of the sins when I commit this sin? We understand that most of the sins, when we commit it, we are following our lust. There is a temporary pleasure 
that doesn't last. But we know that it is a sin. We do not really repent sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not really see that this sin is a dangerous thing because we don't know the effects of the sin. So the first chapter, we will speak about the effects of the sin. And in the second chapter, which is the bright side that in our lives, that if we look at it, we have to reinforce it, which is piety. Avoiding the sins and the effects of piety. What is the kind of happiness that we can achieve through piety? In the narration, the Imam says, Uhrub min al ma'asiyati kahurubika min al asad. Run away from the sin the same way you run away from a lion. I run away from a lion because I know the danger that I put myself in if I don't run away from the lion. Understand that the lion can attack me, can kill me, even if I'm in a room and the lion in the separate room, I will be worried, I'll be afraid just for the thought that there might be a room just outside, uh, there, there might be a lion just outside my room. Because I understand the danger of that wild animal, I run away from it because my life depends on it. The Imam is telling me, run away from the sin the same way. In order to be able to run away from the sin properly, I have to understand the danger of the sin. What are the effects and the traces that this sin leaves in me? On the level of soul, on the level of the, the physical level, and in this dunya, and on the day of judgment. Sin is an illness, is a sickness of the soul, of the spirit, as was narrated, that at the noob da that sins are a sickness, are a disease, and repentance is the medicine. Some of these diseases are chronic, like arrogance, narcissism, like ujub, uh, when someone admires his actions, when he does a good deed, he likes to show off, he praises himself. So, our responsibility is to protect this nafs, this grace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and trusted us with and he will take it back when it's time for death. We have to protect it. We have to look after it because Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سليم. On that day, no kids, no money will benefit you. Only that pure, clean heart that you protected. This is our responsibility. As narrated from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he says, عَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَحْتَمِي عَنَ الطَّعَامِ مَخَافَةَ الْمَرَضِ كَيْفَ لَا يَحْتَمِي مِنَ الذُّنُوبِ مَخَافَةَ النَّارِ It's surprising how a person can avoid certain types of food just to avoid a stomachache, avoid a certain sickness, how come they do not avoid the sins to avoid themselves from the hellfire? What are the effects of these sins? The danger, the, the danger of the sins. The first thing is polluting the nafs. The sin would leave traces in my heart that would lead to hardness, that would lead to darkness in the heart till a person would have, would have boldness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was narrated that Banu Israel, they killed in one night 400 prophets, 400 messengers in one night. And then the second day, they went to their own lives normally, to the markets, to their gatherings. In one night, imagine what kind of hardness and boldness they achieved because of the sins. One of the effects of sins is forgetting the knowledge. The knowledge that we learn, that helps us in our daily life, and the most danger type, dangerous type of knowledge to lose is the knowledge that helps us in the day of judgment. The knowledge that get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sins would make us forget that knowledge. The narration says, Avoid sins. 
because it destroyed, it destroys the goodness. In al abda a worshiper would commit a sin, he would forget the knowledge that he learned. And imagine this knowledge, everything in our life depends on. Acceptance to a job depends on the knowledge. Acceptance to a certain university depends on my knowledge. Being in a certain community, to be respected in that community depends on knowledge. The poet says, شَكَوْتُ إِلَىٰ حَكِيمٍ سُوءَ حِفْظِي فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي وَقَالَ لِي بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُؤْتَاهُ عَاصِي I complained to a wise man that my, I have a bad memory. He told me to avoid sins. And then he said that knowledge is light and the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be in the heart of a sinful man. Cannot two contradicted things cannot be, cannot happen together in the same place, the same times. And one of the major, the major sins that makes a person forgets his knowledge is ujub. When he loves what he does and he praises himself and he shows off about the things, the good things that he does. أول ما يفعل بالمعجب أن ينزع الله منه ما أعجب به. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa taala would take away from a person who admires his actions is that he takes that actions that the action that he was proud about. So, on the other hand, taqwa, piety, would add to that knowledge, as Allah says in the Quran: "اتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله." Be pious. Avoid disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoid disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you. One of the effects of the sins as well is that the worship would be taken from me. The reverence would be taken from me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted me the tawfiq to do an extra dua after salat, to do Salat al-Layl, for example, because of a certain sin, I would, this worship, additional worship would be taken from me. I wouldn't wake up for Salat al-Fajr, for example, because of a sin. A man came to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and said, he complained to me, he said, look, I can't wake up at night and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Imam told him, you are a man that the sins left shackles on your feet and on your hands. And in another narration, in al abda la yudnibu al dhamb fa yumna bihi qiyam al layl. A worshipper would commit a sin, he won't be able to wake up at night. He won't be granted the tawfiq to wake up at night. And not just like, he might not, the worship might not be taken from him, but the sweetness of that worship would be taken. He won't feel the sweetness of the worship and the effects of the worship. The fourth thing, the fourth trace of the sin in the soul, in the heart, is that the dua, the supplication would not be responded. A person needs a job, needs a child, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a child, he's married, he wants a child. Allah, he wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him through a certain tragedy. Allah, he wants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure him from a certain sickness. He commits a sin, his dua won't be accepted. His dua won't be responded to. Imam al-Baqir says that the worshipper would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something and he deserves to have that thing. He deserves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills his need. Whether if it's soon or later. But he would commit a sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of that he would tell the angel do not fulfill his need and take it away from him. Because he deserved my anger. Before, he deserved to, his dua to be responded to. To take what he wanted. But now, he deserved my punishment. And one of the main sins that would lead that the dua would not be responded to is oppression. Oppressing people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I won't accept the dua of, a, of an oppressed person when he is oppressing the people the same way he was oppressed. So someone, for example, uh, his boss, 
is oppressing him. He has a very bad boss at work. But he is uh, supervising another worker, another apprentice. He does dua so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can help him through that oppression that he's going through with that boss. And yet, he's oppressing this apprentice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't respond to his supplication. And one of these sins that lead to that same result is when someone has a bad intention in his actions. When someone leaves al-amr bil ma'roof for enjoining what's good. The fifth trace of the sins is that the grace would be taken. The grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be gone. I'm a wealthy man, for example. After a while, I lost everything. I have a child. After a while, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that child from me. I have health. I have security. After a while, this grace was taken from me. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not take back a grace that he gave it to a worshipper till he commits a certain sin that he deserves for that grace to be taken away from him. The calamities would be sent upon that worshipper if he commits sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Every tragedy, every calamity that you go through, it's because of what your hands gave out, what your hands committed. What I did, the sins that I committed are the reasons why I'm going through hardships, for example. Imam Sadiq, listen to what point, till what point that calamity is. Imam Sadiq السلام, says, أَمَا إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ عِرْقٍ يُضْرَبْ Any vein that is ruined in the body, any tragedy, even the headaches, are because of a sin, are a result of a sin. And in another narration, every stumble is for a sin. كل عثرة بذم. If I'm walking and I stumbled, that is because of a sin. This is one on one of the effects of the sin. One of the most dangerous effects of the, of the sin that it makes a an obstacle and a barrier between the worshiper and his Lord, between me and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah says, speaks about that in the Quran. What they did in their life made rust, created rust on their heart. Because of that, there is a veil, there is a barrier between them and their Lord. Not just that, that would make and create a barrier between me and the Imam of, of my time. Imam Sahib al-Asri was Zaman Ajallah Ta'ala Farajul Sharif. Inshallah, on that, on, a, on the night that we speak about Imam Sahib al-Asri was Zaman, we will speak about how can he benefit me during his absence. Ali ibn Mahzayar, he visited Imam Hassan al-Askari alayhi salam and he asked him, he said, I came to ask about the hidden Imam. <coughs> He said, I'm here to ask about the hidden Imam. What did the Imam al-Askari answer him? He said, he is not hidden. What made him hidden is your bad deeds. Not as a person, as his followers. His followers' sins made him absent and hidden. The sins would create a burden, a heavy burden on the back of a person. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad, he says, inna dhuhurakum thaqeela bi awzarikum, that your backs are holding a heavy burden because of your sins. فَخَفِّفُوا anha bi طُولِ سُجُودِكُمْ Make that weight lighter by prostrating more, by prostrating for a longer time. And this burden would accompany us till the day of judgment. That's why in the dua of Abi Hamza Thumali we say, Abki li khuruji min qabri uryanan dhalilan. I cry because I'm leaving my grave 
naked and humiliated. How? Holding the weight on my back. Holding my weight on my back. Now let's speak about the happy side of this. About what would happen if I avoid sin. If I become pious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ مَا Be pious as much as you can. That's how we achieve to the level of Habib ibn Mudar. Even no, no matter how much we try, we can't. But we try our best in order to make Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman wait for us and long to meet us. This Allah's advice to us is not only to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to the people before us. Since Adam, as he says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ That we gave advice to the people before you and we are advising you to be pious. And being pious is to avoid everything that angers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To avoid committing everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to commit. So I don't look a haram look. I lower my gaze from the haram things. I do not listen to music. I do not listen to backbiting. I, be, I, I will be pious in everything that I say. I don't say a lie. I do not say bad words and insult people. I do not harm a mu'min, a brother in faith. And I become pious when it comes to the people's money. When I'm in a business, in a trade, I will be pious when it comes to that. I take only what is my right. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, تَرْكُ لُقْمَةِ حَرَامِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ صَلَاةِ الْفَيْرِكْ عَدَطَ To leave a haram bite, something that's not halal, to avoid it and not eat it, it's better than praying two thousand rak'at that are rec- recommended, not a must. Sheikh Jafar Kashif al Ghita, one of the respected scholars, he used to say, whoever avoids haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put a barrier between him and the haram. If with my own will I insist on av- avoiding haram and I have the pure intention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep me away from the haram. One of the uh, governors at that time, he heard him saying these words. He said, I want to prove him wrong. So he told his, his uh, God, he said, I want you to make a dinner and invite this sheikh and put in every plate, make sure that every plate has a haram meat. So that man came, he stole a sheep and he slaughtered it and he made food and in every plate he put from the haram meat. That governor invited the sheikh. The sheikh came and he ate. After he finished, he said, didn't you say that whoever avoids haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a barrier between him and the haram? He said, yes. And I still say that till now. He said, well, you ate haram. That meat that you ate is from a stolen sheep. He said, I'm certain that this is not haram. How did you get this sheep? He called the guard. He said, well, there was a man, a farmer, who was walking and holding this sheep with him, I hit him and took the sheep and I imprisoned him. And I slaughtered the sheep. He said, can you bring me that uh, farmer? He brought him from the prison. The farmer came and stood up. He said, what's your story? He said, well, I heard that there is a sheikh, a scholar who's coming to this village. So I had this sheep. I wanted to gift it to him. And then this man came and hit me and took the sheep and imprisoned me. He said, well, your gift is received. I am the scholar who came to this village and I received your gift. And he looked at the governor. I said, didn't I tell you that whoever avoids haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put a barrier between him and the haram. So even wilaya, wilaya to Ahlul Bayt cannot be achieved in any way other than piety. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, مَا تُنَالُ wilayatuna." Our wilaya would not be given only to those who are pious, those who are uh, doing 
the their duty fulfilling their duty and this wilaya is the the proper al husn al hasin wilaya to ali ibn abi talib husni fa man dakhala husni amina min adabi and to be safe from the punishment of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only by words is not only by saying the shahadat is not only by saying that i love amir al mu'minin it's by doing if a man is running from a lion and in front of him there is a castle that protects him that he can flee to that castle he cannot stop in front of the lion and he say if you if you attack me i will run to the castle i will go and hide in the castle that doesn't work he has to do straight away he has to fulfill his duty and run to that castle so when a person lives that pious life what are the effects of piety first i will mention them with the verses and the narration fast so i don't spend a lot of time after salat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala al awn wa ta'yid the support from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the divine support will be granted to the pious ones allah says inna allah ma'al ladhina taqu fa allah is with those who are pious it was narrated in the narration law kanat as samawat wal al ard ala al abdi ratqan thumma taqa allah la ja'ala allah lahu makhrajan if the heavens and the earth all of them are against that worshiper are falling upon that worshiper because of piety allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give him an exit the effects of piety that it's a reason for survival it means for survival and the halal rizq ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا whoever obeys allah and is pious allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him exit and survival from every problem in his life from every hardship ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب and it will give him rizq from places that he's not even from places that he least expect number 3 it perfects the actions and the deeds of the worshiper and wipes the sins ya ayuha alladhina amanu ittaqu allah wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum o faithful ones be pious and say what's true allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix your deeds and he would forgive your sins if i have a prayer that i did not perform it in the right way i wasn't concentrating allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perfect it because of piety piety would lead to the love of allah i will be granted the love of allah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me because of piety fa inna allah yuhibbul muttaqin allah loves the pious ones acceptance of the deeds depends on piety inna ma yataqabbal allah min almuttaqin min almuttaqin that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts only from the pious ones the dignity in life is through piety inna akramakum inda allah atqakum those who are with the best dignity the highest dignity in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the most pious one piety is the reason behind the light of knowledge in the heart as i mentioned that the verse says ittaqullah wa yu'allimukum allah be pious and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would teach you the reason behind surviving and avoiding punishment and the fire of hell is through piety thumma nunajjil ladhina taqu as allah says in the quran and we save those who are pious those who were pious piety is the reason behind going to heaven tilka al janna allati nurithu min ibadina man kana taqiya that heaven that we would give to the worshipers those who were pious and at the end i mentioned this of course there is a lot of effects of piety and rewards for those who are pious because of piety we will be with the honest ones with the truthful ones as-sadiqin who are, who are the sadiqin they are muhammad wa ali muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad allah says in the quran ittaqullah wa kunu ma'as ma'as sadiqin be pious and be with the honest ones ان المتقين في جنات ونهر في مقعد صدق عند مليك 
مقتدر that the muttaqin the pious ones are in heavens and rivers in a seat of honor seat of honesty imam al baqir says about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named that seat the seat of honesty because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't accept the non truthful people the non not honest people to be in that seat and honesty has a lot of levels honesty of the words honesty of the actions being trustworthy and this would need another lecture to speak about that's how habib ibn mudahir was was honest with imam hussein he promised that he would come and support him and he came he left his family on the way towards imam hussein he met muslim ibn awsaja he found that he was buying some henna some dye to his beard he said i saw my my wife saw in her dream that say the fatima al zahra alayhi salam told her tell your husband to dye his beard then habib ibn mudahir told him say the zahra meant to dye your beard with your blood supporting abi abdullah al hussein alayhi salam then muslim ibn awsaja went with habib ibn mudahir then habib came to his servant that was with him he told him to wait beside the horse that servant waited for so long habib ibn mudahir came from his back and he heard him saying these few words speaking to the horse he says oh horse if habib if my master habib doesn't come right now i will leave and go towards my master abi abdullah al hussein to fight with him to support him then habib when he heard these few words he said you are free to go then he looked at habib he said do you think that i'm going to leave you to go by yourself i am free yes i choose to go with you to fight with abi abdullah hussein then habib came and walked till he arrived to the land of karbala on the seventh day of muharram al hussein alayhi salam was sitting in front of his tent his companions looking around to the army that's gathering every day every day 10000 from the army comes to karbala 4000 5000 while they were sitting outside there was a man coming on a horse with another man beside him towards the tents of abi abdullah al hussein al imam al hussein looked at his companions he stood up he said get up this is your brother habib bin mudahir he's coming to me habib bin mudahir came closer to abi abdullah al hussein he jumped off the horse and he started to kiss the feet of abi abdullah al hussein and he's saying السلام عليك يا ابا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابا عبد الله زينب عليه السلام heard the news that habib bin mudahir came she was too happy and said لسه يا بن ظاهر كنت وين يا فرحه قلوب النساء وين where were you oh habib you are the happiness of the hearts of the women they know that you are going to defend them then habib bin mudahir took permission from abi abdullah al husain to say salam to zainab and the women al imam al husain gave him permission he came towards the tent and sat on the sands in front the tent of sayyid zainab and he said ah in ah li wajdik ya zainab wa zainab 
Azab, woe to you. I know what's going to happen to you after Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, while his head is going to be on the spear, and the heads of his family on the spear. And I know that my head will be hanged on the neck of a horse, hitting it with his knees. Allah Zainab alayhi salam said, Oh Habib, Al Imam al Hussein told me about this. I would like to be blind and not see these tragedies. Well, Habib, bear a gahoy, a mini sheila, oh hammelib gulbi, mini zila, ya amila chufni, wana zilila. Oh Habib, the standard of Al Imam al Hussein. Saying, who's going to hold it high? Who's going to remove that sorrow from my heart? Oh, uncle, I don't want you to see me while I am humiliated by the enemy. Mahalkum, Mahalkum, Yahli Shiyam, Hada Mahalkum, Lil Mazeman, Idhar, Himamkum, till the time that he went to fight the enemies, the tragedies of of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam were in front of his eyes while he was fighting. He was fighting the enemies and going back to the tents of Al Imam al Hussein, weeping and crying. He did that a few times till one time Al Imam al Hussein looked at him and saw him shedding tears. He said, Oh Habib, did you remember your family? Did you remember your kids did you remember your home you are free to go back and i guarantee that you are going to be in heaven you can leave habib said now you are my family you are my father you are my mother you are everything to me you are my home abi abdullah al hussein then al hussein said oh habib why are you crying habib said i cry for zainab and what's going to happen with zainab after you وَلِقْضَوْا حَقِّ الْعَلِيَهُمْ دُونِ الْإِخْيَامِ وَلَا خَلَّوْا خَوَاتِ حَسِيَانِ تنظام لما انطاح وتفايض منهم الهام تذا تهاووا مثل مهوى النجم من خار they defended the women and the grandchildren of أبي عبد الله الحسين till the till they fell till the till they fell like a shooting stars on the hot sands of Karbala, I say, O oh, Sayyidi, O oh, Master uh, Habib bin Mudahir, I wish you were there to see Zainab alayhi salam after the sunset of Ashura, barefooted, running in Karbala, the orphans around her, no supporter, no Hussein, no Abbas, Amsal Misa ما خلت لنا خيام صوان ما ظل تلتجئ بفيا هليتام أقبل علينا الليل وازدادت الوحشة وما شوف غير يتام تتصارخ بدهشة زينب عليه السلام says that this night befell on us and the fear became more and we see that the body of Imam al Hussein, the head of the tribe is on the sand wounded slaughtered decapitated أو شيخ العشير حسين ما حد شال نعشة مطروح وبصفة علي الأكبر وجسام أقلب طرفي لا حمي ولا حمان سواها فوات الصوت من فوق عاتقي يا الله 
Ilahana bi Abi Abdullah al Hussein, hasten the repentance of Sahib al Asr wa Zaman. Grant us the tawfiq to be of his supporters. Allahumma bi Fatima wa Abiha wa Ba'liha wa Baniha wa Sir al Mustawda Afiha. Ajil Faraja Sahib al Asr wa Zaman, Ikshif Hamma wa Waqdi Hawaija, Waqdi Hawaijana, Hawaija al Mustamirina wa Mustamirat Shafi Jamia al Marba. Itfa al Bala wa Waba and Shia at Yamir al Mu'minin, Walit Ajil al Faraj wa Likova al Hawaj wa Kabur al Amal. وشفاء المرضى والأرواح موات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الشهداء والعلماء نهد الجميع ثواب ما قرأنا وثواب المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين يا حسين